working. When your money starts working harder than you are, then you are officially wealthy. Now here is the thing. Money is a hard worker. It works 24-7. It doesn't go off sick. It doesn't go on maternity or paternity leave. It's always on shift, all shifts. It never gets laid off or tired. Hello, welcome to the Wisdom Inspired Talks podcast. I am Yomi Akinpoelu, your wisdom coach, speaker, teacher, and author of several books. If you're new here, you're welcome. Please consider subscribing if you find the content inspiring. And if you've already subscribed, I want to say a really big thank you to you. And with that said, let's dive into today's topic. So we're talking about investment tips and secrets from the Bible. Genesis 1.28 talks about God blessing man and saying, be fruitful and multiply. This means that God wants you to end up with more than you started out with. In other words, take what is and make something more out of it. In Genesis chapter 30, from about verse 27, we see that Jacob wants to leave the house of Laban to go back to his own country with his own family. But Laban doesn't want him to go because Laban sees that he has prospered since Jacob came to be with him. He sees that he has been prospering. And so he says to Laban, to Jacob, don't leave. I'll pay you whatever you want. What Name your salary, name your wages. But Jacob doesn't want a salary. Jacob wants his own business. He wants his own investments. And so he says to Laban, don't give me a salary. Give me your stock, stock options. Give me some of your lambs and your goat and your goats as my wages that will be my wages and he says i'll take the speckled the striped the colored goats lambs and that will be my wages and so laban agrees and says yes you can have these lambs and these um goats as your own salary in other words Jacob doesn't want a salary. He wants stock options. He wants his own business. He wants his own investments. And so he takes the investments and God gives him a strategy. The strategy that God gives him is very similar to investing in an index fund. Basically, an index fund like the S&P 500 tracks Whatever the top 500 companies in the USA is doing, that's the S&P 500. If you invest in an S&P 500, your investment is tracking the top 500 companies in the USA. In the same way, Jacob takes sticks and he makes stripes and streaks on them spots it makes um white streaks on them so that when the stocks the lambs and the goats when the lambs and the goats are giving birth or drinking from the water trough they are looking at what jacob has put in front of them and so whatever they see is what they are actually giving birth to. So Jacob's lambs and goats tracked whatever Jacob placed in front of them. Just like an index fund tracks a particular index. For example, the S&P 500 tracks the performance of the top 500 companies in the USA. In the same way, Jacob's lambs and goats tracked what they could see when they saw speckled streaked sticks they brought forth speckled and streaked lambs so in the new testament matthew 25 verse 14 to 24 
we have the story of the rich man, the ruler who gave his servants different um, amounts of talents or money, gave one, we could say, gave one 10 pounds, gave another one five pounds, and gave another one one pound. Now, when he returned, the person who was given 10 pounds came with another 10 pounds. So he invested the money and gained another 10 pounds. The man who was given five pounds invested his five pounds and came back with the master with five pounds. And the master said, well done, you faithful servant. You have done well. You who invested 10 pounds and made 10 pounds, I give you rule over 10 cities. You who invested five pounds and came back with five pounds, I give you five cities. And the man who was given one pound came and said, in verse 25, I was afraid and went and hid and buried the talent, the money in the ground. Look, there you, you have what is yours. And verse 26 says, His Lord answered and said, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I do not plant. So why didn't you deposit my money in the bank so that at the very least I will receive back my money with interest? Therefore, take the talent from him, take the, five, take the one pound from him and give it to the man that has ten pounds. And he said, to those who use well what they have been given, more will be given to them again. So when you invest what you have been given, when you make good use of what God has given you, he's saying that you will get more. And that is why you must invest. We can see from the Bible that God wants you to invest what you have, to multiply what you have. He says you must invest the funds that God commits into your hands. The barest minimum is to put it in a bank to get interest, as it says in Matthew 25, 26. But in these days where there's even no interest in, barely nothing in interest, and even if you got a little bit of interest, inflation devalues it. So you can't even afford to leave it in an ordinary bank account yielding 0.01%. You must invest your money or put it in a high yielding account. And we can see this from the Bible. So why must we invest? We must invest so we get to a point where our money is working harder than we are working. When your money starts working harder than you are, then you are officially wealthy. Now here is the thing. Money is a hard worker. It works 24-7. It doesn't go off sick. It doesn't go on maternity or paternity leave. It's always on shift, all shifts. It never gets laid off or tired. It keeps working all the time, even when you are asleep. So invest, invest as much as you can so your money can keep working for you. So we must invest for financial independence and also so that we can be a blessing to our generation. We must invest so we can free our time from nine to five. You know, nine to five till you're 65, we must invest so we can jump out of the rat race. So th these are the two main reasons to invest, for financial freedom, so our time is ours to do as we desire. So we can use our time to serve God, to advance his kingdom, so we are not tied to nine to five. We must invest so that we can be a blessing to our generation. In closing, I would like to say, nobody would have remembered the good Samaritan if he had not had money. And the greatest intrinsic value of money is its ability to give you control over your own time so that you can use that time to serve God, to serve the interests of the kingdom. And then Bill Gates said, if you were born poor, it's not your fault. But if you die poor, it's your fault. And that is all for today. Until next time, 
keep on growing in wisdom and maturity and don't forget to subscribe see you next time